Hi guys, today we're talking about atomic physics and characteristic x-rays. In this problem, it says a bismuth target is struck by electrons and x-rays are emitted. Estimate the transitional energy for bismuth when an electron drops from the M-shell to the L-shell and what is the wavelength of the emitted x-ray. Alright, so we've got a bismuth atom over here and uh, bismuth has Z equals 83 and that means there's going to be 83 protons okay in the nucleus um, which also means there's going to be 83 electrons and I just drew the first three shells okay so we've got uh, the K shell which is this one right here we've got the L shell and we have the M shell in the K shell uh, we'll normally have two electrons okay the L shell will, normally, so let me just write this in here, K equals 2. The L shell will normally have 8 electrons, and the M shell will normally have 18 electrons. Okay, so, but in this problem, what's going on is we have this bismuth atom, and it has been struck by an electron, and uh, that electron has been knocked out of the L shell orbital just completely okay so we have a vacancy right here in the L shell orbital which is n equals 2 so what's going to happen is uh, one of the electrons from this M shell which is n equals 3 is going to replace that vacant electron okay so as you notice the L shell normally has 8 but because one of these electrons was knocked off, it now only has seven. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is where the eighth one normally is. Okay, so this electron um, wants to move into this lowered energy state, okay, because electrons are negative and uh, the nucleus right here is positive, okay, so the further out these electrons are, the more energy is required uh, to stay in these outer shells. So they always want to be in the inner shells. These are like the relaxed, chill shells where you don't have to do much work. Okay, And of course the coziest spot is uh, this N equals 1. That's real cozy. Those guys don't have to do a lot of work to stay where they're at. Okay. So anyways, getting back to the problem, estimate the transitional energy for bismuth when an electron drops from the M shell to the L shell. So I have this uh, formula over here, and this is going to be the energy of the N, uh, whatever you're looking for. If you're looking for the M shell, it's going to be N equals 3. If you're looking for the L shell, it's going to be N equals 2, so on and so forth. It's going to equal a negative Z. Now this is going to be the atomic number, or the number of protons in whatever atom you're you're talking about or looking at minus X and I'll get to X here in a second times 13.6 EV and that's just going to be the ground state okay uh, divided by n squared and that's whatever uh, n you're looking at so if you're looking for the M shell that'd be n equals 3 alright so getting back to this X X is going to equal the total number of electrons in shells lower than n Okay, so this is kind of like a modified equation to uh, uh, to what some have, but this makes it extremely simple, okay? Um, you've got what's called uh, Z-effective, okay? And that's going to be the uh, effective shielding uh, that electrons do uh, to shield each other from the nuclear charge uh, of the nucleus, or from the charge of the nucleus, okay? And so what, how you calculate that what is if you have like uh, EM for the M shell, that's N equals 3, the X is going to be the total number of electrons in shells lower than that. So uh, M, the M shell is N equals 3. Uh, so for that X number, you would calculate how many electrons are in shells N equals 2 and N equals 1, which would be the K shell and the L shell, okay? So in this case, um, you would have seven electrons uh, for the L shell and two electrons for the K shell. All right, so let's find E, E, M is going to equal a negative 
z, and so the z of bismuth is 83, the atomic number, 83, minus our x, and in this case, uh, like I said, it's going to be the total number of electrons in shells lower than uh, the n number. So we are, m is going to be n equals 3, uh, so we need to find the number of electrons in n equals 2 and n equals 1. So n equals 2 is this uh, L shell, and n equals 1 is this K shell. So like I said, we counted them up, and we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here on the L shell, and then we've got 2 in the K shell. So that's going to give us 9. All right, so 83 minus 9. And uh, that's going to be squared. Uh, I forgot to do it, but uh, that's going to be squared. Okay, <laughs> So that's going to be squared times our 13.6 EV divided by our N squared, which in this case uh, N is going to be 3 because we're looking at the M shell. Alright, so 3 squared. And that is going to give us, uh, go to the calculator real fast, so we got our negative 83 minus 9 squared times 13.6 EV divided by our n squared, and it is going to give us uh, a negative 8274.844 uh, EV. Okay. So that's going to give us, uh, and I'll just write this over here. So EM is going to equal a negative. Uh, eight, two, seven, four, point eight, four, EV. Okay. All right. So now we need to do. Uh, we need to do because this is dropping from the M shell to the L shell. So now we have to do the L shell. Okay. So we say uh, E of L is going to equal a negative z number of 83 All right, but now this time uh, for x like I said we have to look at how many shell or how many electrons are going to be in shells lower than n equals 2 okay so well for that we only got one shell it's the k shell which is n equals 1 and as you notice there's only two electrons okay so you're just going to put two electrons and you're going to square that multiply it by 13.6 EV times the N number, and of course this is uh, our L shell, so N equals 2, uh, so it's 2 squared, and that is going to give us uh, negative 22,307.4 EV. Okay. So, write this over here. E of L is going to give us a negative 22,307.4 EV. Okay, so now uh, to find the, the basically the energy between those, because remember, we're talking about transitional energy. We need to find the difference, okay? So the difference or the change in E is going to equal EM minus EL, okay? So, uh, we're, let's use a few different colors here. So we've got EM which is a negative 8, 2, 7, 4.84 EV minus a negative 22,307.4 EV. Alright. Okay, and so obviously, uh, you know, these, these are going to become positive, and that's going to be negative. 
Uh, and when we do that, uh, our change in E, or the transitional energy, is going to equal four, roughly 14 keV. Okay, so you throw that uh, decimal place over, you're going to get uh, 14 uh, keV. Okay, so we'll just say. Uh, I'm going to actually write it up here. Change in E is going to equal 14 K E V. All right, so that is the transitional energy uh, from when an electron drops from the M shell to the L shell. Okay, now for part two, let me just kind of. Uh, Erase something real fast here. Okay, now I've erased that. Uh, part two, what is the wavelength of the emitted x-ray? So I've got some equations down here. So we know that the energy is going to equal h, which is Planck's constant, times the frequency. And we also know the frequency equals the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to convert this over to joules. Uh, so it's in uh, it's in electron volts right now, and to do that, it's really simple. Uh, you just use this little equation that says uh, uh, joules divided by the charge of an electron is going to give you eV. So if you're in eV, uh, to get to joules, all you're going to do is multiply it by the charge of an electron. Okay, so when I say uh, 14 keV, or say uh, 14,032.555 eV times the charge of an electron, uh, and that's going to give us our answer in joules. And when I do that, uh, so as you can see here, I've got the uh, 14,032.555 times charge of an electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the ne negative 19 coulombs, uh, and that's going to give us our answer of 2.248 uh, times 10 to the negative 15 joules. Okay, so we get uh, 2.248 times 10 to the negative 15 joules. All right, now that we have our, our energy in joules, we can uh, come up with a good equation to get the wavelength. So we know that E, uh, e equals H times F. And we also know that F equals C divided by the wavelength. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to place that F with the C divided by wavelength, and so you get E equals H times uh, C divided by our wavelength, and uh, that becomes wavelength equals uh, H, which is Planck's constant, times C, the speed of light, divided by our energy in joules, okay? And when we do that, we get, so I've got Planck's constant down here. It's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th uh, times the speed of light, which is in meters per second, uh, divided by our energy in joules. Uh, and by the way, this Planck's constant, that's in joule seconds or joules times seconds, okay? Uh, and when we do that, we're going to get 8.84 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. Okay, so uh, the wavelength is going to equal 8.84 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. And just so you know, like the, the units are correct, uh, remember that h, which is Planck's constant, is going to be in joule seconds times uh, the speed of light, which is in meters per second, and that's all going to be divided by 
uh, e, which is in joules. And when you see that, or when you when you do that, you can see that the joules cancel out, seconds cancel out, and you're left with meters, which is what we want. Uh, anyways, I hope that helped.